record. All right, welcome everyone to the Discovering Open Textbooks um, Open Cafe mini workshop by the University Libraries at CSUDH. Uh, my name is Christina Springfield. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I am the OER librarian, as well as the campus coordinator for the Affordable Learning Solutions Program at CSUDH. My dog is snoring, hi. Um, so if you have any questions or you'd like to follow up, um, there's ways where you can schedule an appointment with me or email me and I'd be happy to meet one on one with you with for any questions that you have. So we're going to skip the poll, um, but the plan for this little mini workshop is to talk about some of the trends in textbook costs and their impact on student success. We're also going to be covering what an open textbook is, if you've never heard of them before, kind of a definition, and go over some of their benefits to faculty members. We're also going to talk about what an open license is, and then we're going to um, review some of the main places where you can go to start searching for OER textbooks um, in your individual disciplines. So um, this slide kind of um, introduces some of the main effects of high textbook cost on students. Um, so there's been many studies and surveys done, um, finding that students, um, in order to cope with their textbook costs, they will oftentimes purchase an older edition of the textbook, delay purchasing of the textbook till later on in the semester, maybe after a couple paychecks come through or financial aid comes through. They never purchase the textbook. They'll share their textbook with other students, or they will download textbooks from the internet. And when I say download textbooks, I do mean pirated copies, <laughs> which is a copyright violation and obviously puts them at risk. Um, the top four reasons though are academic risks, um, not legal, not copyright, but academic risks that make it um, you know, a little harder for students to succeed academically in their classes. Um, this was a survey done by, um, done in Florida and it looked at, um, surveyed over two, 20,000 university undergraduate students. Um, and they asked students um, in their academic career if the cost of required textbooks had ever caused them you know, certain difficulties. 64.2% um, reported at some point in their academic career not having purchased the required textbook. Um, when they looked at it in a, on a semester, like looking at one semester, they found about one third of students do not buy at least one assigned textbook in a semester. Um, students report taking less courses, meaning they're going to have a longer time um, completing their degree program, not registering for a specific course, um, so perhaps influencing their decisions about major, or again, that timely completion of their course requirements. Um, many report that not having the required textbook um, caused them to earn a poor grade, drop a course, withdraw from a course, or fail a course. So we do see this like really direct relationship between access to the course textbook and student success. So what is an open textbook? Um, there are some misconceptions about what an open textbook actually is. So I always like to talk a little bit about this. Um, by definition, all open educational resources, which is the umbrella under which open educational textbooks fall, give users um, specific rights that are given by the copyright owner to others. So, um, these rights include things like being able to retain a copy of the material, make copies um, for their own use, reuse content, so being able to redistribute it and make copies and make it available to others, revise the content in many, in many aspects, um, so like tweaking content, rewriting parts of it, um, taking pieces and adding it to your own, um, own content, um, remixing, which I guess it's it's very similar, revising and remixing, and also redistributing. So making sure that that content can be available to others. So we call those the five R's, um, and they get built into different Creative Commons licenses, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Some of the the main takeaways in terms of benefits of using an open textbook is that all students get free day one access to their course materials. Free, I said, right? <laughs> free is also a huge benefit. Um, for students that prefer to have a printed copy, um, OER allows students to take that file or that textbook to any, print, any, any printer, including campus bookstores, and get a copy printed off at a very low cost. Um, they're more accessible because, again, there are certain rights that are um, 
you know, just given away right at the front where students can adapt, remix, um, or transform content for whatever kind of purpose they need. One of the other big um, factors that faculty really like about them is that you can customize them and revise them at will. You don't have to ask for permission from the copyright holder. You're just, you're just told to go, go ahead and have fun and um, do what you need with them. So um, on the left, Oh, here we go. We have somebody. I'm going to stop sharing. And we have one person entering right now. Welcome to that person who's um, in our workshop right now. Um, we're just talking about um, what open educational resources are, a definition, as well as what a Creative Commons license is. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, this is very informal, so you can, we can go back and talk about um, what we covered in the earlier part of the workshop. Um, but on the left hand side, you see a symbol that's associated with copyright that we've all seen everywhere. That's the, the standard copyright symbol and it says that, you know, the producer or the creator of the materials has certain rights. On the right hand side, we see a symbol for what's called a Creative Commons license. Um, which is a license that a creator places on their material when they want people to be able to freely share, freely share the content and do some of the five R's with it, revise, remix, redistribute. Um, they're basically saying if they have a CC license, I want you to use this. You don't have to ask for my permission. Go ahead, go for it. And Creative Commons licenses, um, will tell you what the creator would like you to be able to do with that content. So um, copying, mixing it, sharing it, editing it, using it. Um, there's, because this can get all quite complicated, they've sort of developed a system to make it a lot more easy to understand what those permissions are. So these are the four main symbols that are associated with the Creative Commons license. If you can understand these four symbols, then you can understand any Creative Commons license. So these symbols, um, the first with the little man uh, or woman, man or woman, um, is by, which means that you can utilize this content as long as you give attribution to the original creator. The next symbol, NC, means you can do whatever you want with this content, except you can't use it for commercial purposes. The next symbol, SA means share alike. And that means you can do whatever you want with this, com this content, but if you make it, if you make it available um, to others, you also you have to apply a Creative Commons license to it. And the last symbol, ND, means um, uh, no derivatives, meaning you can do what you want, except you cannot make changes to this original content. You have to reshare it in the original form. And so all of these different symbols can be combined in different ways. Um, but if you ever have questions about what you can do with a particular open educational resource and you're a little bit unsure of like how to understand the, the copyright license, you can get in touch with a librarian um, like myself and we can help you know, walk you through what it actually means. There's some good websites out there though, um, especially the Creative Commons website, which sort of breaks down and says in really like plain text English what the different licenses are and what they mean. It is very common though for most open educational textbooks to have this first, um, the first um, license, which is Creative Commons attribution. So you can do whatever you want. You can remix it, you can revise it, um, you can redistribute it as long as you include information about who the creator is. You give attribution to the original creator. So here's an example of what we call an open textbook. So an open textbook is one kind of open educational resource of this umbrella. So open educational resources mean that they have one of these open licenses applied to them, but they could include anything from courses to syllabi, assignments. Um, this though is an example of an open educational textbook. Um, this is a, an example from OpenStax, which is one of the really big publishers of um, open educational textbooks. Um, and notice that, um, you know, I put some stats up about it. It's available in a lot of different formats. Um, so PDF, EPUB for like Kindles or other kinds of readers. 
You can read it on the web. Um, and it also includes a lot of what we call ancillary materials. So I'm gonna bring up, this is an example. I'm going to this textbooks um, page um, in OpenStax and you can see that it does have available a Blackboard course cartridge, um, which would have things like test banks or other ways to integrate this textbook really easily into your Blackboard course. Um, things like instructors getting started guides, PowerPoint slides for lectures, um, solutions manual for instructors, etc. So depending on the, the textbook, it may or may not have these additional materials available, just like with any other textbook that you would find. Some have a lot of these little extras that come with it, and some are, are just the text. So it's a, something to think about when you're choosing a textbook in terms of what's most important to you. So let me go back here um, to this slide. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, you know, some of the trends and some of the ways that textbook costs impact student success. We talked about what OER are and what an open textbook is. And we took a look at an example of what one of these looks like. Um, in this case, a college physics textbook. But what if you're teaching in an area um, that isn't physics? How do you find out whether there might be uh, an appropriate open textbook out there for you that you can take a look at? And I always stress to faculty that you know, they really are the um, content experts. Um, and they need to think about what they want in a textbook, what their teaching style is, um, what's important to them. Um, and faculty are the ones that are, are the people that are gonna be able to make the best decisions about what's going to work best for their classroom and their students. Um, so librarians like myself can help faculty find different options that are out there. But at the end of the day, it's the faculty member that needs to review and decide whether it's a good fit for their students or their class. So in terms of finding open textbooks, um, we tend to look for them in something called an OER repository. I'm not really sure why that word was originally selected to describe them, <laughs> but they're essentially like these co curated collections, um, oftentimes lists of different textbooks that have been produced, um, oftentimes by individual faculty members, often with grant funding, um, or through some larger governmentally um, sponsored programs. Hey, Dougie. Um, so what I'm showing you here is um, a snapshot of a guide that the University Libraries has put together on open educational resources. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to that page. Um, so from the library's website, here we are on the library's homepage. And if we go over here to research guides, we have a research guide set up that is all about open educational resources. So I'm highlighting that tab right here. And this is a guide that talks a lot about what OER are, how to find them, about Creative Commons licenses. It's a really good reference if you have questions. Um, but there is a tab on finding OER where I've listed some of the most popular repositories that are out there, some of the larger ones that I've been able to find good quality content in to show faculty members. Um, so there's a lot listed here. Um, as you'll notice, a lot of them are um, governmentally sponsored. So for example, the British Columbia um, textbook repository, Grand Valley State, um, MIT, um, et cetera. Some of these are different nonprofits that have been set up in the educational sector, um, like Lumen Learning um, or something like um, Sailor Academy. These are other, they're not um, specifically tied to any, <laughs> any one university. Oh my gosh, my dog is being so loud. Um, but in different repositories are gonna have um, oftentimes different content and different subject specialties. Um, so for example, um, OpenStax, let's um, take a look at OpenStax. I really like OpenStax. I think they have usually have very high quality textbooks. Um, and when you click on a repository, there's often going to be a way to search just by keyword or title. 
So when you're searching for your own discipline, you know, think about the textbook that you currently assign. What is the title of it? Um, maybe it's, you know, um, Introduction to Kinesiology or um, Modern American Writers or whatever the case might be. You can try typing in some keywords that are related to that topic. Or you can go in and they will almost always have a browse function where you can browse by subject. So in um, BC Open Campus, we can see these different um, subject breakdowns on the left-hand side. Let's say I'm teaching a class in journalism. So I might try clicking on communication writing and I see, okay, we've got books on academic writing, creative writing, media, professional communication, what might be the best fit? Let's try clicking on media and seeing what comes up. Um, so media culture and you, we get a description, um, we can click on it. And this is going to take us to more information about that book, um, as well as the Creative Commons license associated with this book. So this is one of those really open licenses where you can do whatever you want with it. You can revise it, you can change it, um, you can redistribute it, it's free. And we can also see links um, to an editable, editable copy or just a readable copy um, of this particular book. You're also gonna get more information about like who the authors are, when it was last updated or published, um, whether it's been peer reviewed, as many open textbooks have been peer reviewed. Um, so here we can either read the book in the browser. So this is something that you could just share with students in Blackboard with the contents. Um, this is using Pressbooks, which is a very common format for publishing open textbooks. Um, and you can see that, um, you know, we've got links to things, we've got images, they'll often include um, activities or quiz questions at the end, um, just like a, a normal textbook would. Um, so that's an example of BC Open Campus. I want to show you another example of um, a repository that CSUDH is actually a part of, um, because we are now members of something called the Open Education Network. So we have an institutional membership to the Open Education Network. And one of the things that they, um, they handle is something called, let's see, where are you? It is called the Open Textbook Library. So this is also linked on the guide. Um, the Open Textbook Library is um, produced by the OEN. It's out of the University of Minnesota. And one of the nice features of this repository, it does have the browse um, feature. Um, you can also search. So maybe I'm looking at, you know, we're looking for something on ethics. Um, so we have one on ethics and public speaking, taxes, business ethics, animals and ethics, ethics and law, like lots of different kinds of ethics books. Um, but the really nice thing about the OEN is that CSUDH faculty are able to submit peer reviews of these books. And everyone online is able to read the peer reviews that other faculty have completed about these books. So um, here we have an example of an open textbook. Um, we have a table of contents, we have a PDF, um, we have a Creative Commons license, which um, if we were to break it down says that you can do whatever you want with this book as long as you give us credit, um, as long as you're not making money off of it. And if you're going to change it or alter it in any way and make it available to others, you're going to you're going to um, assign a, a similar license to it so that other people can continue to reuse and redistribute. Um, and here we have some examples of the peer review process that these books go through. Uh, and it'll list the faculty member's name, their institution, um, and they have a particular rubric that they use um, on this website um, in this network on comprehensiveness accuracy, relevance, longevity, clarity, consistency, modularity, organization, interface, gram uh, grammar, cultural relevance, and then additional comments. So it's a pretty, um, reading through these different peer reviews should give you a pretty good idea of um, its quality and how other faculty in the disciplines have, what they thought of them. So this is one other example um, of a repository the last one that I wanted to share an example to is, what was the last one I was going to share? 
Uh, oh, actually, you know, that was the last one I wanted to demo for you. Um, you know, we do have this list that you can, you know, go through and explore, try typing in some keywords related to whatever discipline that you teach in. Um, however, if you get overwhelmed, confused, want a guiding hand, you can also um, just set up a one-to-one -one appointment with either a librarian in your subject area or the OER librarian like myself. And we can sort of talk through the process one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we can do some searching. We can learn more about what you're looking for in a textbook um, and go through some of the questions that you might have about Creative Commons licenses, open pedagogy, um, or where you might be able to find appropriate um, open resources. So I wanted to take just, I know that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link to the um, OER guide into the chat. Um, so let me go ahead and drop that in for everyone. Whoops. So this is a link to our OER research guide. Um, and again, this was just supposed to be a super quick introduction to what they are and some of the places that you can go to find them. Um, if you want to take some time to do a little searching, poking around, um, that finding OER page is the fourth tab down, where it lists some of the major repositories that each include a little short description, um, which some are very, pretty big because their content is really broad. <laughs> Others are a little bit more specific. Um, and then if you have any questions, I, you can feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute yourself and I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you have um, before you continue on with your day. So Christina, we have a question in the chat. Sure, yeah. What question? I didn't think, I don't think I see it. Could you read it aloud for me? Okay, it said, um, Catherine said, will you send out a summary of your presentation by email? Can you send us that web link by email as well? Yeah, definitely. I will be sure to do that. I can share out the slides um, as well. And then if you have any questions at all, feel free to schedule a follow up with me. I can also do a similar presentation, you know, for a department. If you, know, you think you're, you have any colleagues that might be interested, um, we can do one customized particular, you know, department, your area that you teach in. Um, we're also planning on making a recording available um, of this presentation. Um, and actually, go ahead and in the chat, let me know if you are comfortable with making this recording available of this workshop, or if you're not comfortable, that's fine too. Just go ahead and drop that in the chat so that we'll know. But yes, I will send a follow up. Any other questions? Um, no questions in the chat. Okay. Um, yes. We did good on time. It was a lot to cover in 30 minutes, but I feel like <laughs> we got through the, the, the super fast version. All right then. Well, I am gonna go ahead then and um, close out the chat, but if anybody has any follow-up questions, um, shoot me an email. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the chat as well. Um, it's my first initial C, Springfield, Lake the City, at csudh.edu. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Go ahead and stop recording.